Hey guys, my name is Elena and I've been working and living in Ukraine for the last one year and a half. In this video, I want to uh, give you some tips and tricks uh, for what to expect in Ukraine, uh, especially if this is your first time coming. Uh, my circumstances are a little bit unique because I was born and raised in Moldova, which is a bordering country on the Ukraine. So I speak Russian, I can understand Ukrainian pretty well, although I don't speak it, and I really know the customs and traditions in the region. Uh, that being said, uh, I lived and worked in different countries around the world and uh, this last time when I came to Ukraine after spending two years in the US, I could feel that some things, although I've been accustomed to them since being a child, now didn't make as much sense for me. So I do have somewhat a foreigner mentality, uh, but when people in Ukraine look at me, they treat me as a local. There are five big buckets in which I grouped all the tips that I'm going to give you today. Number one being how you present yourself to the world, and this is really important in Eastern Europe. How you interact with other people, whether that's somebody with whom you're romantically involved or just a friend. Uh, what can you expect from the dining scene, from shopping? What is the food like? Uh, should you tip your waiters? Should you bargain in the store? Number four is transportation and traveling. Uh, how easy it is to get around, especially if you don't know the language? Do the local people know the language? And finally, but not least important, is safety. How safe it is. When you are in Eastern Europe, if you want to make a you know pleasant impression on the people you'll be interacting with, please take extra care about the clothes that you wear. Um, I don't mean that you have to wear business clothes or they have to be expensive. Something casual is fine as long as it's clean and it looks clean. No ripped clothes, no wrinkled clothes. We can spot in Ukraine a foreigner, especially from America, from a mile because all of his clothes are wrinkled. If you don't like to iron clothes, that's fine with me. I don't like to do it either, but I don't buy clothes that wrinkle a lot in, in the luggage. If you have a cap, um, please take it out when you are indoors. I've seen a lot of people from Northern America uh, who got many nasty glances because in Eastern Europe you don't wear hats uh, inside. The only exception is when you go into an Orthodox church, women must cover their head and men have to take any um, uh, hats or headwear off, off, the, off the head. And if you went hiking in the mountains in Ukraine, please bring you know some jeans, some pants, a t-shirt or a shirt that you will be wearing in the city. Uh, when people have this uh, sporty clothes uh, without really going to a sporty occasion, it just looks plain odd. If we're talking about uh, dating, which is a very interesting topic for a lot of people, you should know that Ukraine has very strong and conservative gender roles. So a man does the things that a man should typically do and a woman does more feminine stuff like take care of the family and raise the children and whatnot. I think that this is really changing, but there are a lot of people even among the younger crowd who still uphold uh, this mentality. And what that means for, for dating, I guess, uh, for ladies is that uh, men are pretty assertive in Eastern Europe and Ukraine specifically. If a man likes you, he will let you know and he will be very clear about the fact that um, he wants to go on a date with you or you should get drinks together. Uh, men are pretty blunt and to the point. Um, this is very different from Western Europe. So in the case that you like a man, I think that that's great. You know, it's receiving more attention and people being very upfront about their intentions with you. But on the flip side, sometimes um, men have a hard time taking no for an answer. That is, they're really respectful, but sometimes they get a little bit on, on the pushy side, like you have to repeat multiple times that you're not interested. Men are chivalrous, they pay this, play this manly role and they try to get the girl and the girl is getting all this extra attention and suitors and she must choose the most worthy one and then have a long-term relationship and raise his kids and whatnot. Um, so it goes like this, which means that the man has to do all the approaching and talking and once uh, a man gets a date, uh, he is the one paying for everything. So he's picking up the girl from her place, driving to a restaurant that he booked beforehand, uh, paying for the meal, tipping the waiter, 
uh, then they go to a concert he already bought the tickets and they go drinking uh, you know he um, pays for the drinks and then because he had drinks he cannot drive he's taking an uber to drop the girl first make sure she's at home safely and only then he can go home so you see there's a lot of extra effort that men have to do in the region and i think that makes it truly uh, not possible for a man to have multiple partners because like you have to do a lot of leg work to be in a relationship women on the other hand uh, their role here is more to be you know beautiful and to be attractive so you can see even walking on the streets that you know women are with long hair uh, usually beautiful makeup beautiful dresses you know, long nails high heels and and all that if you're going into ukraine thinking you'll have a lot of one night stands and a lot of you know relationships like that that doesn't pretty much hold because um, Ukrainians are more conservative in that regard. That doesn't mean that Ukrainians don't have sex before marriage or don't enjoy like living with each other before getting married, but they want to define the relationships, uh, the relationship they are having with you early on, and they tend to gravitate towards more serious and more committed relationships. Uh, so if they understand from the start, you know, you're just looking for something for a night or two, a lot of them might be dissuaded because um, people like something more serious in which they can invest time and effort. And that would give them some sort of payoff, usually in the form of getting married or, you know, just having a long term uh, rewarding relationship. If you're not thinking about dating in Ukraine, but just want to create some relationships to know people and maybe even make some friends, I'd say it's a bit more challenging than in other countries. People are um, not as open, especially when they hit their 30s, to create new friendships. So if you're sitting at the bar and there's a nice group of people talking um, and you decide to go to them and say, hey, you know, like you look so nice, uh, uh, you seem to be having a very interesting conversation. Can I join you? Can I hang out with you? You know, maybe I should get you a round of drinks, guys. People would look at you very, very weirdly. People seem very cold and distant and you are a foreigner to them and they don't really allow you in their in their personal space. Like it, it really does take effort to make friends, especially as an adult in, in the Ukraine. Um, also, like when you're just being nice and smiling at strangers, this is also considered a bit odd. If you don't know the person, you shouldn't be smiling at them because like, why are you smiling? What's, what's wrong with you? However, when you do get to know people closer, they are very sweet, they will make you feel welcomed. And at the point when they will invite you into their homes, uh, a part of the etiquette is to always bring a gift with you. Uh, doesn't matter like uh, whether they invited you to see a movie or, you know, uh, they have a party, whatever that would be, you either show up with a bottle of wine, a bouquet of flowers, some chocolates, or something that the host likes, or you can just openly text the host and ask if you can pick up something. Although they would always say not to bring anything, be sure to never come with empty pockets. The third point is food, restaurants, tipping, uh, shopping, bargaining, all that good stuff that I really enjoy. Eastern European food is delicious and honestly, if you're here, I challenge you to taste all those weird dishes that make Eastern European cuisine so distinct from other countries. I have a special video about weird Eastern European foods for New Year that I um, uh, invite you to watch. It's really interesting and you can gain a much bigger familiarity into what is Eastern European cuisine. One thing that Eastern European cuisine is not, it's, it's spicy. So if you enjoy that sort of food, I advise you to take your hot sauce with yourself. If you invite your Eastern European friends over, or maybe you're preparing a dish from your own country, that most Eastern Europeans have a really low spice tolerance. So be aware of that. Uh, we went with a friend to a Chinese restaurant that has really spicy Sichuan cuisine. And we asked him if he he's fine with that. And he said, yeah, yeah, it, it's okay. Uh, but after eating, he got all red, he started sweating, like the sweat was dripping from his head. He was that hot. He was, you know, his, his mouth was burning. If you have any food restrictions, such as allergies or you're a vegetarian or a vegan, I feel for you. If you are a vegan, I think you'll get a lot of strange stares. 
especially if you're a man and you're not eating meat people are like what, what what is wrong with you why are you not eating meat so explaining that does take a lot of effort and regular restaurants don't have as many dishes that are truly vegetarian or vegan because the the kitchen is shared so probably they're using the same utensils to cook all all the dishes uh, one good thing, thing for vegans is that um, since ukraine is a christian country we have fasts so it's a period of time uh, usually before big um, religious holidays for example there was one recently before easter where really like religious people eat uh, don't eat any any meat or uh, meat related products it's called a fast and during that time, most restaurants would care a special fasting menu. So there are a lot of vegan and vegetarian options um, out there. Again, if you're in bigger cities, I think you'll, you'll manage. If you are in villages or smaller cities, you can really struggle with that. When somebody in Ukraine hears that um, a person has food allergy, like peanut allergy, the first reaction would be, so what, like he doesn't or she doesn't like peanuts? That's it. Um, in Ukraine, there are not as many people who have serious allergies as in, in the US. So the concept of people getting seriously sick or even you know having the threat of dying from eating something is really, is really foreign to these people. Uh, that is to say, you probably will, do, will be doing a lot of cooking at home. Tipping is pretty common and expected in Eastern Europe. I usually leave around 10% of the bill. Uh, there are people who like to uh, leave a fixed amount. And then if somebody really enjoys the service, they can go up to 20%, but it's definitely on you. Uh, it would not be anything bad if you leave a smaller amount of money, but something definitely has, has to be left. When you go shopping, everything, all the prices on the items, it doesn't matter whether it's in a, it's in a shop or in the street, have fixed prices. Now, you can bargain a little bit and the vendor can say something along the lines, well, if you buy five souvenirs, then I can give you like a discount, maybe five or 10%, but it's as far as it goes. If you bargain excessively or try to push the merchant to give you more discount, it's usually viewed as rude. We don't really have the culture of bargaining. It's definitely up to the vendor to give you a discount or not give you a discount. Traveling and transportation tends to get a bit difficult, especially if you don't know the language. That's why I advise you to either book everything, all your trip through um, a travel agency. They will make sure there will be a guide with you to transport you to all the places that you want to see. But if it's not in your budget and you're feeling adventurous, uh, then you can definitely book all the transportation by yourself and visit all the places that you want. Usually there are three main directions for travel in the Ukraine. Either you go to the Black Sea coastline in a city like Odessa and go to the sea, get a suntan, uh, party, you know, go drinking, that kind of lifestyle. And usually people settle in, um, in Odessa for that. There's also a very nice village near Odessa among so many others, it's called Vilkova. Uh, and it's a place called the Ukrainian Venice because um, it's in a Danube Delta and has a lot of beautiful Islands. You can explore it with a boat, with a tour guide. There are a lot of animals and birds. It's really like a side of paradise. Uh, the second direction, if you like um, a more mountainy area, uh, beautiful architecture, then I definitely recommend you go to Lviv. That's in the western part of Ukraine. Uh, there are a lot of mountains, um, mountain um, skiing, res <laughs> skiing resorts like Bukovel, uh, where you can go in um, winter. In summer, you can just explore the forests, go hiking. There are beautiful castles in that region. And finally, if you're fond of partying, exploring the culture, uh, going to concerts, then Kiev, the capital of Ukraine, is definitely for you. It's a multicultural city, it's a big city, um, it's uh, very nice, there are a lot of cultural activities going on there. Um, if you're thinking about day trips or things you can do around Kiev, then going to uh, Pripet, which was the village near the Chernobyl, uh, nuclear station. Uh, that's a really worthy thing to visit, especially for lovers of history. Uh, the Chernobyl region was made super popular by the HBO movie uh, with the same name, and I think it got a lot of international attention. That's definitely one of the things that I went to visit in Ukraine, and I didn't get yet a chance to do so because of the quarantine thing. Uh, the resources that I personally use for uh, booking my tickets is Tutu, 
uh, .ru. Uh, this is a great resource for any kind of booking, but I especially use it for Ukrainian railways. There's uh, Autolux, Autolux. Uh, which is a great resource for booking buses and there's a good uh, airline in Ukraine called Mao and it's really convenient for booking flights within the country but also into other European countries. If you don't like to travel by public transportation as much, uh, there is a service called Blah Blah Car uh, in which you can book seats in a, in a car. So you can book all the seats in a car, it could be just you and the driver, and the driver usually sets the destination. For example, uh, he'll be traveling from Odessa to Kiev. Um, and if you want to uh, be the only person with, with a driver, you can book all three seats and it'll be a very comfortable way to, to get around. If you are in bigger cities, there is um, a lot of variety of those taxi apps. The most famous being obviously Uber, but there's also a local one called Uklon, uh, which seems to have pretty good service. And there are multiple smaller ones uh, in each city. But if you uh, download Uber or Uklon, you should be okay for the majority of the big cities. The final, but probably one of the most important points is how safe is Ukraine? Uh, nowadays, Ukraine is an active uh, military conflict with a big country, with Russia. Uh, and I think a lot of people who come, especially for the first time, are curious, hey, like how, how safe is it, is it here? Unless you go to the eastern region where the conflict zones are very active or to Crimea, which was a region that was uh, snatched back by Russia, I think you are pretty safe. I would say that uh, generally people in Ukraine feel very safe in the whole country except those specific regions. The second question that I get is, well, like how, how safe it is on the street, in big cities, uh, will I get mugged? Crime rate in here is not as high. And definitely the percentage of violent crimes like mass shootings, uh, terrorism is much lower. One of the possible explanation is that um, as a person, it's very difficult to get access to firearms um, to ammunition of any kind. So people, you know, I'm not saying that in Ukraine people are kinder than in other countries. I'm just saying that it's more difficult to commit crimes like that. And generally, I feel more safe in Ukraine than I felt in, <laughs> and that I felt in the U.S. in uh, Chicago. Although Odessa is kind of a criminal city, I feel like the amount of crime that goes on in here is more related to, you know. Uh, stealing a car and stealing, you know, things like that or mugging somebody without actually threatening somebody's life. Uh, that being said, uh, do not walk alone at night. If you're drunk, just make sure you're in a group of friends who will take care of you. Exercise basic precaution, otherwise Ukraine is a super safe country. The last thing that I want to flag, and I wish the situation was different, but it's not, and I think it's really important to be upfront about it. If you are a member of LGBTQ community, um, Eastern Europe per general, and Ukraine specifically, is not the best place to travel. If people cannot see from your appearance that you're you know, a member of the LGBTQ, I would say not to volunteer that information. And even if people ask you, especially if those are people who are strangers to you, I would just lie and not, not admit it. I hope in the future things will change and people would be more accepting of diversity. But right now, especially when it comes to sexual preferences, it's not a very, it's not a very accepting society. Well, thank you so much for sticking with me throughout this video. If you've made it so far, please leave a like and a comment down below. If you have any question that you feel that I didn't answer well, uh, let me know in the comment. Uh, and also let me know what other topics you'd like to know about Ukraine. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Have a good day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.